I'm gonna show you one amazing library that will help you implement location tracking, then translating the location coordinates into a place object and vice versa, but also how to implement a place uh, autocomplete feature so that you can search for uh, various uh, cities around the globe and uh, get some more information about them as well. All of that using a Kotlin multi-platform for iOS and Android. Stay tuned. So the library itself is called Compass. It has a really nice documentation website that you can check it out. Plus, it includes the feature to handle location permissions as well. You don't even have to bother by yourself. Different artifacts are available for various target platforms. In this demo video, we're gonna focus on iOS and Android, however. Nevertheless, first, make sure to create a KMP project with a shared UI for Android and iOS. I have already done this step, so I'm not gonna repeat it. Anyhow, we need to include the, all these dependencies that you can see right here. So, we have a geolocation, geocoding, autocomplete, and the location permission helper as well. Each one of those artifacts, except the permissions, have a core variant and a mobile one. The mobile one is used for iOS and Android. But you do need to include both of them anyways. After that, just add all of them in a Compose app Gradlebill file and we're good to go. Great. First, I'm gonna show you how to implement the logic to get a current user's location once. And then I'm gonna show you how you can track the user's location in a real time as well. Here on the top, we need to initialize a locator object. So be sure to call a mobile function, because that's the object used to handle the geolocation for both Android and iOS. After that, once we enter the composition, I will ask for the current user's location, by using the geolocator object. If the result is successful, we can log the coordinates. And we can also handle an error case for various situations. A location permission will be automatically requested at a runtime when we trigger this logic. No need to define any permissions here in this project, because it's automatically handled by the Compass permissions artifact. However, for handling the iOS permissions, we do need to include and actually declare two properties inside the plist info file. Because those are the iOS requirements. If you don't specify these uh, two properties here, then a permission dialog will not show up on uh, iOS at all. Now, before we launch this application on uh, both platforms, I'm gonna quickly open up the Xcode and uh, load this uh, same project. After that, open up the plist uh, info file and uh, declare here uh, those two properties that I have mentioned earlier. Each one should contain a different description for the reason why you're asking for this permission. And now we are ready to test this out. So let's launch both Android Emulator and the iOS Simulator. Once the application starts, you're gonna be prompted immediately to give a location consent. After that, we're gonna see coordinates in the log, which means we have successfully fetched the current user's location. If you suddenly encounter this uh, error message in Xcode saying that uh, geolocation has failed, uh, then you need to make sure to select the location because this is required for uh, iOS simulator to work. So in the Xcode, press shortcut Command Shift plus uh, comma. After which, a new window will appear. From this window, select Run tab and then Options. From there, be sure to check this option called Allow Location Simulation and choose one of the locations from the drop-down menu. After that, launch an iOS simulator once again and everything will work fine. Coordinates log will appear right away after we launch the application. Perfect. The next thing before we implement a real-time tracking, I want to show you how a geocoding feature works. So we're gonna convert this coordinates object into a place object. Which means we can extract the name of the city along with some other useful information from just the coordinates. Pretty neat. That logic will be implemented as soon as we fetch those coordinates. So below here, let's call mobile geocoder then place or null function, and from this uh, place object, I'm gonna extract uh, in the log only the locality name. 
you can pick one of those other information here as well. It's your choice. So now, when we launch this application, after we fetch the location, we are also going to convert uh, those uh, coordinates into a real place object that corresponds to that uh, same location. In the Android emulator, we can place some random route, for example, and then you will see that uh, same city appearing in the logs. In this case, that's Belgrade. Great, it works like a charm. Now, for the iOS simulator, you can simulate the location by going to a debug and then a simulate location option. After that, from this drop down, you can select one of these options or even choose a custom one of your choice. In this case, let's choose, for example, Mumbai and then launch the iOS simulator. After the application is launched, you will be able to see pretty much the same result in the logs. Except this is a different city, of course. Perfect. Next comes the real-time location tracking. For that, I will create here a new composable function. And on top of that, we need to declare a couple of uh, variables. The first one, a coordinate scope that uh, will be used to trigger function for a starting and a stopping a real-time tracking. After that, a geolocation instance. And after that we can also observe the status of the location so that we can use it later to disable or enable a button on our screen. You will see about that in a moment. Next, let's add also two more variables to hold the current location of the coordinates type as well as a city of a string type with a null as a default values. On the center of the screen I will add a text to display the name of the city using a geocoder. If that value is a null, I'll display a text that says waiting, or otherwise the name of the city will be shown. Below that, we will add another text to show the coordinates of the current user's location. And below that, we can add a row with the two buttons. One to start and the second one to stop the location tracking. Note that, however, I'm passing here a location request with a priority height accuracy as a value, which means we're gonna receive location updates pretty quickly. You will notice here that the start button will be disabled after we start tracking, unless we stop it. And the stop button will be enabled only after we start tracking the location. When we stop tracking the user, we can also reset those uh, two properties for the coordinates and for the city name as well. Perfect. Lastly, to make things simpler, instead of using the view model right now, I'm just gonna add a launch effect block. So in this first one, we are gonna observe the location updates flow. And this flow will return us the coordinates. Then we're gonna update the current location property with that value, but also a current city as well. The second launched effect should be used to react to a different uh, tracking status entries. In this case, I just want to showcase that you can observe an error, so that you can display an appropriate message in your UI if something bad happens. And that's pretty much everything you need to do to start tracking users' location in real time. Don't forget to call this uh, whole composable function within the column above. And we are good to go. As soon as the application launches, you can see that the only start button is enabled. After we start tracking the user's location, that button will become disabled, and the stop button will become enabled. For the demonstration purposes, I will start here a random route in a Belgrade, just to see the location updates from an emulator. And after you click start button, you will notice uh, updates in the user location coordinates. But the city text will be properly parsed as well. Now, for the iOS part, I'm not sure if there is a way to simulate a route like we do have in Android emulator, but nevertheless, I have already tested this logic on my iPhone device and everything seems to work just fine. So there you go, we have successfully implemented a location tracking functionality in our application pretty quickly. It works without any issues on both platforms, which is amazing. Finally, I'm gonna show you how to implement the autocomplete functionality so that you can search for uh, different cities around the world and get a result for the search query inside the drop-down menu. We're gonna create a new composable function and declare uh, multiple variables. First, we have a coroutine scope that uh, we're gonna use to trigger the autocomplete. Then, we are initializing the autocomplete for a mobile instance. After that, the expanded variable should be used to decide whether to show an autocomplete drop-down or not. 
Search query will be tied to a text field. A places variable should represent a list of a multiple places that the autocomplete will fill up if we find a result from the search query. And lastly, a selected place variable that will hold the place that we select from the autocomplete dropdown. Now, below that, let's declare a text element that will hold the currently selected place. If the selected place is not null, we're gonna get some data from the place object, like the name of the city, country, and the coordinates of that location as well. Then, we need to wrap this uh, text field within the expose uh, dropdown menu box together with the uh, expose uh, dropdown menu. We can pass the expanded state to this uh, parent box as well. Now, for the text field, we can customize uh, options and actions, as well as uh, trigger the autocomplete feature of this library when a user clicks the search icon within the keyboard. That's the place where we can also update the expanded state and uh, trigger a drop down menu. Finally, below that, we need an actual drop down menu. Then, inside the trailing lambda of this composable, we can write the logic if a places list is not empty, only then show a drop down filled with uh, items from this list. So, as simple as that. Now, we can try running this application once again. And from the text field, just uh, write some uh, name uh, of the city. And then the autocomplete feature will display multiple results that resemble so that search query that we have written right here. When we click one of those items from the drop-down, a selected place variable will be updated and it will reflect its data in the UI, where we are fetching some more information about that selected place. Perfect! Have you tried tracking users' location for both Android and iOS? And did you know about this library anyways? Comment down below and let me know! Also, don't forget to start this repository and leave a like to this video, but only if you find it helpful. Thank you for watching.